is my bedroom, too, and you cannot shut me out. Guess what? I just did! Coming up, we'll have an update on little Tim O'Neill's condition. But first, an Ed Edwards editorial. Ed? Susan, when a recent magazine survey listed Edgetown as one of the worst places in America to worst live... Worst places! Worst places! It came as quite a blow. Quite a blow! Quite a blow! To our economy and our self-esteem. Self-esteem! Self-esteem! Edgetown seems to be in the forefront of just about every trend out there today. From runaway teens, crime, unemployment, air quality, glue sniffing... Does he think it helps to harp on it like he does? There is no room at the end. There is no room at the end. There is no room at the end. Did you know I played Joseph? I'm surprised to let you do this these days. How, how come the school board's not against it? Well, because it is a fundraiser for Tib. Yeah, so we thought Tib's family should have their say. We gave them a playlist, and this is what they picked. Well, it's a special case, so they okayed it, I guess, huh? All of us are still reeling from the latest drive-by shooting. The victims this time, a six-year-old boy, Tim O'Neill, and his dog, Shorty. Doctors say when Tim was told about the Christmas play being done in his honor, he lit up like a Christmas tree. You know, I gotta tell, I just hope they throw the book at those punks. Edith, honey, what are you thinking? Oh, I don't know, Bob. I'm thinking when I grow up, I think maybe Tim and me could do an animal act. Yeah, like Siegfried and Roy, yes. Was Irene dressed when you came down? No, I walked in on her in the bedroom, and she was stark but naked. And right... Oh, oh nothing. Get out, you evil little elf! Hey, Bob. What? Oh, nothing. Oh, don't give me oh, nothing. You're thinking something now. What is it? I am thinking about something you are not going to like. Okay, if I tell, promise you will keep your lid on. Well, what is it now? Maybe I saw it. It was right on her left butt. Bob. Bob, you promised. You promised you would keep your lid on. This is me with my lid on. And this is me with my lid off. Okay? What the heck is it? You're red. I'm telling you. She's got what? another tattoo. Oh, How many times do you want to say it? Sakes. I don't even hear my book. She's got another hey, tattoo. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Year, I had it up here with you. Irene, honey. Get that tattooed fanny of yours down here this instant. Right now, we have reached zero tolerance. Zero? We told you no more tattoos. No more. You're going to say tough love, so you tough young lady is going to make your nose ring quiver. Will somebody please tell me that this cannot be happening? Irene, front and center, pronto. I can't. I'm waxing. Fed up with this town. Cops always cracking down. Looking at you like you're some kind of clown. We had an agreement, didn't we? No, the two of you had an agreement. It's my body. Yes, it's your body, but it's under my roof. You find another place if you're here. Easter eggs, arguing with each other about who should be where. One of you should just give up and find somewhere else to stand. Comprende? Okay, let's just take a break. Dr. Lopez, when I say hark, do you hear something? Uh, where do I look? Who's playing hark anyway? Hark is a biblical slang word for listen. Well, how am I supposed to know? How do I get the towels to not look like towels? It doesn't even look like a towel. It looks like a hairy tourniquet. Why don't you give it a shave? Dr. Lopez, make Edith stop being so rude. Dr. 
Lopez. Make Edith stop being so rude. Edith, what's wrong? You're not yourself today. No, I am myself today. That's just it. What is it? Tim? Tim, yes. And my sister, Dr. Lopez. See, I... I did something. Is this big enough? Hey. Okay, now, listen up. Next run through, I want you to hit your marks. And no scripts. I want you to know your lines inside and out. Oh, wait, wait, my lungs. Wait, let me get my whiffer. Oh, no. Yikes! <laughs> Look, okay, you can't stay here, Irene. I mean, every time one of you little malcontent teenoids runs away, like, okay, we feel the heat. Like, <laughs> like we're a bad influence? Come on. Yeah, guilt by association. Yeah. Just because you come to us for your tattoos. Here, eat this. Then we got to throw you out. Eat. I thought you'd be on my side. You two were runaways once, you said. We said that to scare some sense into you. Yeah, I never crossed our minds that you'd see us uh, as role models. But you said I could maybe help out here, learn to be a tattoo artist, maybe. I'm going to need a skill. Look. By running away, you botched your chance for apprenticeship. Kill any career opportunity you had here. Nobody wants a runaway. Nobody wants us before we run away either. Ever think of that? No, I'm going to really, really have to run away. You've left me no choice. Wow. What we just did was pure textbook Tough love. The only thing we have to fear is here itself. Yes, the Dear Diary, the cops said itself. most runaways run right back or stay overnight with someone who knows them. Anyone who knows Irene is not going to want her to stay over. So no, she is out there on the street alone. Taking on a big co-star role. His mind wanders, Dr. Lopez. It looks like I don't know my lines, but I do. You're right. You know what? He knows everybody's lines. That's his problem. See, I can hardly get my lines in before he says them for me. Is that what happens? Is what what happens? Look now. If you forget your lines, just tell the story in your own way. Ad lib. Look inside yourself for inspiration, and the words are going to come. Trust me. No, trust yourselves. Well, okay, when we're looking inside, uh, where's the audience looking? Hey, good news about Shorty. The vet said he'll do okay without his bad legs. He'll be up and around soon. Up. Yeah, like that's easy. Maybe you could teach us how to do that someday. What? You know, control our hopes. Uh. Listen, we must talk. You remember yesterday when you asked me, was there something wrong? You remember? Uh... Do ya? I'm sorry. What is wrong, Edith? Tim? No, it is not just only Tim. It, it's my... my sister. She's run away. Oh, Edith. Yes, and it is partly my fault. No, mostly. Doctor, if you do something and then you're sorry for what you did, what can you do to undo it? 
Hey, 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 help! You can't always undo what you've done, but you can look for a chance to do something good to make up for it. Yeah. See, I wished Irene would run away. And now she has. And it feels like my heart has a flat tire. No, no, not like a flat tire. It's more like a... Like, like the wind got knocked out of your sails? Yes. Yes, like the wind got knocked out of my sails. Yes. I know. It's all a part of life. You better run on now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, what's that smell? Hey, is that secondhand smoke? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's about 22 cigarettes. Okay, now wait a minute. Those are not all mine, Edith. Not that I need to explain this to you. I only allow myself one a week. This works for me. For years, I would stop and start and stop and start, back and forth, back and oh, forth. Oh, yada, yada, yada. I know, I know. Yo-yo smoking. Am I right? Yeah. I'll go now so you can have a few puffs in peace. And don't worry, I won't tell anyone. But it is a abhorrent habit. Da da dum da gentleman and da 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 I thought I'd check and see if maybe you guys found my pig vomit poster. Lost it somewhere. Look, what gets lost here usually stays lost. But come on in and look. Since you're here, we should play you this message left on our machine. This is an urgency. If you know where my sister is, please tell her to come home. Daddy's been sober a year now, and this could drive him back to drink. Oh, tell her Vic took his first step. If she comes home, she can see him walk. Bye. Yeah, well, must have lost my poster somewhere else. The guilt nog really hit the spot. Uh. Fa -la 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 -la. I'm getting out of here. I had it up to you. I'm taking Molly and my pair. We're backing up on you and getting out of here. Out of here, out of here. I cannot take another year. I had it up to you. and there's no one to pull the curtain. Where's Tomas? He's back there with Buzzy. Yeah, you told him we needed more shepherds. Doctor, doctor, doctor. I left my whiffer in my locker. I need it. Are you having an attack now? No, but not having my whiffer could bring one on. Okay, okay, I'll go get it. Start without me. It's okay. Everybody! Places. This is for you, Tim. It's been hard, but you're worth it. Bye. 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 Hark! I mean, look, Tui. Uh, I mean, Mary yawn in. Ah, shelter at last. Hark! Oh yes. Uh, hark! Do you hear footsteps? Uh, footsteps? No, I heard nothing. Did you, Mary? No, I heard nothing, too. Be 
be of some help? Oh, yes, dear innkeeper. Please, a room. As you see, my wife here is heavy with child. <laughs> well, she can't be too far along. She hardly shows. <laughs> Didn't you see the no vacancy sign? You should have made a reservation. For days, people have been pouring in to pay their taxes. Please, we need a room. Please. You can't always undo what you've done, but you can look for a chance to do something good to make up for it. Hey, wait. True, we are full up, and there are no empty rooms. But my dear husband and I can give you our room. Has my mind wandered? But, but... Oh, yes, we could sleep right here on the floor. Honey, go get the futons. Oh, we don't want to put you out. No, the stable will do. Oh, no, the stable is simply not hygienic enough. You just trust me, it is no place for a newborn babe. I hope you won't mind twin beds. What's up? It's time for us to hear Harold's angels sing, and Joseph and Mary aren't even in the manger yet. Go back to your sheep. Mary has not gone into labor yet. Mary, has your water broke? Oh, what about the wise men? They'll go to the stable and no baby. Leave word for them to come here. Look, everything is the same, except Mary and the baby will be here in a nice, safe, warm room with 24-hour room service. Uh, okay then. Hasta la vista. Happy Hanukkah! Well, they cook something safe and TV. That's what it is. Well, I blame TV. Madonna. Yes. No, this is not a secret. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Edith, do so. You got us into this. <laughs> Everyone, please! Edith, Edith wants, wants to say to something because she started, started it. What were you thinking, child? Okay, see, when we forgot our lines, I remember what Dr. Lopez said. She said, look inside and get inspiration and tell it in your own way. And I thought about Mary and Joseph and... Here they, they didn't have any place to stay. They were homeless and they had a baby coming. I figured they were scared and nervous. And I looked inside and the inside of me just could not turn them away. Back then in Bethlehem, they turned Mary and Joseph away. But if Mary and Joseph came to Edgetown today, I am pretty sure we would help them out. Yes, then maybe all this bad talk about Edgetown being such a rotten place would stop. I bet back then, just like Edgetown, people in Bethlehem, they got mugged then, too. Of course, there was no cars, there was no drive-bys, there was no car jackings. I bet you there was some donkey jackings. There was no metal detectors, no crack babies, no violence on TV. Back then, all the violence had to be done in person. So, all through the play, I just kept thinking about my runaway sister, Irene. She is just like Mary. She needs a place to stay. Oh, no, no, she is not pregnant. And we are all hoping that she is still a virgin. But wherever she is tonight, please do not turn her away. Give her some soup and some crackers. Yes, and maybe a multiple. <gasps> oh, yes! Here is Tim's hairy hero, and his best friend at pet skateboard, Shorty O'Neal, and his buns of steel. I'm Ed Edwards. Well, there you have it. There are many versions of the Christmas story. As a non-believer, I must say I've never believed in any of them. But I tell you, there were times tonight when... We had planned to bring you Tim's reaction to all of this, but we've just been told Tim has slipped into a coma. More about Tim on tonight's news and an in-depth report on comas at 11. Dear Diary, 
the news about Tim really knocked the wind out of my sails. But when we got in, Irene called and said she was coming home. Mom cried, and Dad said we could all turn over a new leaf, which is just about the best idea I ever heard. And tonight, I heard on the news about this dog that brought this boy out of his coma by licking his face. Yeah, tomorrow, first thing, I will take Shorty to see Tim to begin treatment. Then we heard the car outside. Sometimes something happens that knocks the wind out of your sails. And other times, something happens and the wind gets knocked back in. Yo-yo feelings. Yes. Merry Christmas, everyone. And hey, listen, if you are like me and you have trouble controlling your hopes, I would just like to say, don't worry. Life controls them for us. Yes, and that's the truth. me at? Other than crowded malls and John Tesh music. Whoa! Phone chillers. Check this out. It's autopsy time. We're all doomed. Phone chillers. <laughs> Scarier than a really bad manicure. Saturday mornings on ABC.